Welcome. Welcome to the beach. Yay. In Manly, New South Wales, which is part of Sydney. Hello. Hello. Who's... This is Jenny and Tim. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for you. There you are. Jenny and Tim, nice to meet yes. you. Where are you calling in from? We're in Melbourne. Melbourne. Ah, oh, nice. That's not too far away. My brother's in Melbourne. Okay. We would like to be on the beach. It's not as bright in Melbourne as it is there in Manly. Ah, well, you are on the beach. Welcome. You just arrived. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So, I'm here in Manly Beach. Welcome and welcome to those people who are watching from YouTube. Ah, oh, my name is Adam and I'm here today to share you with you a little bit about my life and about the practices that have helped me to overcome so so much, you know. I uh I had cancer as a teenager and these practices really helped me go from being in everyday chronic pain to to walking one of the hardest treks in the world and being a professional wheelchair tennis player in between. Um, but first, I'm going to show you around the sun that has just popped through. So take a look at this. It's beautiful. That's Jamie. Is that Jamie that just spoke? Yeah. Yeah. Jamie and Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, Jamie and Mark. Nice to meet you. Yeah. This is one of my favorite places in the world. I come here all the time to do my practices. And this is where I've chosen to do the, my, the Airbnb experience because it just feel, it feels nice to be able to do this on the beach where people are you know, a lot of people are stuck inside and, uh, you know, I really, I really feel for anyone who hasn't been able to go outside and go to the beach and, and nature. So, so welcome. Uh, I'd love to hear uh, one at a time, you know, if you could introduce yourself. Let's start with Jamie, Jamie and Mark. Hi, we're calling in from Mexico City, even though it looks like Greece behind us. Uh, and looking forward to hearing your story and also learning from you. Great. And what inspired you to come to this experience? Um, both of us have worked in the Olympics and Paralympics before, so we've heard some really interesting stories. And uh, uh, you're stood out to us. Forward to it. Oh, great. Also, also, Jenny and Tim. Oh, Jenny's my cousin. <laughs> oh, okay. So it was a way to connect. It's uh, Jenny and Tim who are basically. Great, bringing family together. That's what that's what I love about this. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And we got Joshua. Yep, I'm Josh, calling in from San Francisco. Uh, I saw your experience, and it seemed like a really nice way to uh, learn something new <laughs> and also hear your story. So we really look forward to that. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And we've got Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Oh, hello. I'm unmuting. Um, I'm in Midland, Texas, and my family a lot of their being big experience. We travel, and we're just really supportive of trying to be supportive of the Olympians and Paralympians. And um, I'm on here to my daughter Emily Missla. Uh, Fantastic. Welcome. Welcome, Barbara. And we've got Alistair. Hi. Yeah, I'm in Boston. Did I, you said did I it say right. your name right? Yeah, yeah you did, Alistair. Yeah. Um, it's a tough one. But um, yeah, I'm in Boston, and I thought this would be a, an awesome experience to, to give it a try. So here we are. Here we are. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And Jenny, uh, Jenna and Tim, I've been in touch with you jen i'm glad you I'm glad you made it to this one yeah this is great we're absolutely delighted thanks to mark and jamie 
So, um, yeah, this is new to us. So it's brilliant. It's brilliant to be part of it. And you're part of the uh, US Olympic Committee, or you were? Paralympic Committee? Oh, no, no. We're yeah. just regular Joes. We, okay. <laughs> we're cousins. Myself and Mark are cousins. So we're in Melbourne, okay. Australia. But, but we are really interested in um, hearing your story and seeing what you do. So it's great. It's great to be part of. Well, welcome and thanks all for coming. Okay, welcome. And so I suppose I'll start with, you know, what this what this practice means to me. You know, like I like I mentioned before, I had I had cancer when I was a teenager, and I went through chemotherapy and surgery where they actually removed half of my pelvis, irradiated it outside of my body, put some of it back inside with a partial hip replacement. And then I had to learn how to walk again after six weeks on bed rest. And so that that bed rest was probably the, the hardest time of my life. I went from being a soccer player as a kid, couldn't sit still, didn't like being inside, you know, it was outside all the time to literally being stuck in a bed. I couldn't even get up to go to the toilet. And so, as you can imagine, that was really challenging for a 13 year old. And that lasted for three years because it's not, not the bed rest, but the, the treatment, because there was a complication where that surgery on my hip, they, it got infected basically. And they had to remove everything that they had done. And so what I'm left with today is actually, I only have half a pelvis and so, after they took out the remaining half of my pelvis, I was in a lot of pain for many, many years. And about five or six years ago, I started coming across mindfulness and meditation, as well as nutrition, as well as just, I did a lot of research around, um, oh, I haven't introduced everyone yet. Oh, sorry, Emily, welcome. Oh, I can't hear you. I don't think you're, oh, there you are. Connecting to audio. And I see Heather as well, but your camera and audio is off. I'm here. Okay. Hi, I have, I'm uh, Heather. What, inspi what inspired uh, you to come this, today? so many things. I love the Olympics. I love Australia and I'm very into mindfulness. So I'm really looking forward to hearing your story. Oh, great. And where are you from? I'm from New Jersey in the US. New Jersey. Great. Welcome. And Thank you. Emily. Now you're on mute. Okay. Well, hi. I can make up a story about where you're from. Um, be from Tanzania in Africa, you know, in a million dollar mansion. Okay, I think that is everybody. Okay. Okay, back to the story. So I came across mindfulness meditation and I started looking into how I could manage my pain better. And I came across a guy called the Movement Monk who started teaching me about a form of standing meditation that you learned how to release all the tension in your body. And what this did was it started teaching me about how I can, like, like any emotion, like when I feel angry, I feel angry, I let it come out. I try not my best not to point that anger at anyone or project it at anyone. And then it moves on. And so with the standing meditation, by standing in pain and embracing it, it eventually was able to be cleared out. And it took, it took quite a number of years. Um, but to start with, I would love to invite you all to stand up. And if you're watching on YouTube, uh, I invite you to, to stand up as well. This, this is a practice that can you know, you don't get the benefit just from watching anyone else do it. You have to be actively participate in it. 
Um, so I invite you to stand up and, and join us for, for this guided standing meditation. Uh, and if you can't stand up and you're at home, you can also do this, you can also do this sitting down. So it's, we're going to scan the body from the feet up to the head and then back down. And at the end of it, hopefully you feel nice and relaxed. So I, I do invite people to close their eyes through this practice because as, as any meditation practice, it's, it's an it's an internal experience. I know the, I know the view is amazing right now. It is uh, truly stunning. Um, but for you to get the most out of this practice, uh, it's best to close your eyes and then you get to be surprised again by the view all over again. So, all right. I invite you to stand with your feet about shoulder width apart and just give your body a little bit of a shake out. Just getting, just bringing some movement in and then coming into into rest when you're ready with your arms by your side slightly bend your knees just just a little bit and so we're going to hold and we're going to hold this position and when you're comfortable finding the still position closing your eyes focusing on your breaths feeling what it's like to be alive through acknowledging your entire inhale, your entire in-breath and your entire exhale, your out-breath. Breathing in fully, seeing, watching the space between the inhale and the exhale and then exhaling fully. And as you breathe, letting go of anything that has happened before this moment today. Anything yesterday, anything last week, letting it all go. And also letting go anything to come later today, tomorrow or next week, any thoughts, past and future, acknowledge them and let them go, come back into this moment with your breath. And your body. And start paying attention to your feet. And I invite you to imagine the, the energy of tranquility relaxation or peace, whichever word really speaks to you. Whatever that, wherever you can imagine that energy, breathing that energy in up into your feet and breathing out tension. And moving up to your ankles Breathing in tranquility and breathing out tension. Moving your way up through calf muscles into your knees, softening the back of your knees and all the muscles around. Moving up through your quadriceps and your thighs, your upper leg muscles, your glutes, into your hip joints and your pelvis, breathing in tranquility and breathing out tension. And as you breathe and as you scan your body, just noticing any sensations or any feelings that are here for you. And just allow them to be there without judging them as good or bad. Just allow yourself to feel them for what they are. And breathing deeply into your belly. Breathing in tranquility and breathing out tension. 
relaxing your belly completely. Your lower back. And your lower spine. And just traveling up the lower spine and breathing in, expanding your chest and your upper back. Breathing out, releasing any tension. And maybe you're noticing the urge to move. Maybe there's some slight discomfort or uncomfortable sensations. Just notice, notice them. And allow them to be there. And then coming back to your breath and moving to your shoulders. Breathing in deeply to your shoulders, relaxing all the muscles. Just feeling as much detail as you can with your breath and your awareness. And breathing out tension. Moving down through your shoulders, through your biceps, triceps, into your elbows. Releasing, letting go, and into your forearms, into your wrists, hands, and fingers. Breathing in tranquility and breathing out tension. Moving back up your body to your neck. Breathing in to your neck. Feeling anything that's there and breathing out tension. Allowing any tightness, any holding to melt away like butter. Moving up through your head, back of your head, the top of your head. into your forehead and all the muscles of your face, your eyebrows, your temples, eyes, nose, cheeks, ears, Lips, jaw, tongue, and throat. With your breath, breathing in and breathing out. Breathing into any area of your body that is catching your attention. Being present with any feelings or sensations that are there. Just accepting everything that is in your experience right now. Any thoughts that come, any feelings that come, even the feeling of, okay, you're ready for this to be over. Now just gently scanning from the top of your head back down your body. And slowly as you can, all the way down to your feet, back to the earth. And with one last exhale or deep inhale together, everyone, everyone watching on YouTube and everyone here with me, breathe in together, the count of three, one, two, three, breathing in. 
and a collective exhale. And starting to wiggle your toes, your fingers, your wrists, ankles, knees, bringing some movement to your body, your whole body. And just observing what your experience is like. And if anyone who's with me in the chat would like to uh, share with me your, your experience, I would love to hear it. Feel free to unmute yourself. How do you feel? Oh. How do you it feel, Jen and Tim? Yes, it was a, it was um, it was really it was relaxing and quiet and mindful. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice way to bring stillness to mind and, and body. Yeah. Hmm. Great. Would anyone else like to share? It was really nice. It felt good to just go slow for a second. Yeah. Amazing. Thanks, Calista. Anyone else? Yeah, it felt like you could really feel the, the tension kind of melt away as you pulled out certain parts of the body, just kind of slowing down like Calista was saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a it's amazing what we can do with our intention and our breath, you know, just having just that word of, you know, tranquility or relaxation or peace, whichever word really speaks to you. Um, and, you know, really focusing on the body, we can, we can, we can do this, we can invite these feelings into our body. Yeah. Okay, any, anyone else like to share? I will. For me, it just felt good closed. I'm so tired. I'm not super tired. I'm closing my eyes and just having that relaxation just weirdly energized me a little bit. I don't know if that even makes sense. <laughs> I'm good to close my eyes and release all of that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, amazing to, to notice. And I suppose that, you know, there's there's no right or wrong in this in this practice. So you, you, by you, Barbara, noticing that you became more energized, it's like, that, that's, that's fantastic to notice. And with, within my experience of this practice, by relaxing and opening the energetic channels in the body, it allows the energy to flow more freely. And so we do feel more energized because there's, there's less holding in the body because holding, that takes energy. It takes a lot of energy to lift weights because we're, we're, we're tensing everything and we're lifting weights. But in meditation, it's all about letting go. The more we can let go, the more energy we have access to in, in our life and in our body. And so this leads perfectly into the, the next practice, which is uh, called calligraphy qigong. Um, uh, but before we do, I just want to see if uh, Jamie and Mark, if you want to... How did you go? Meditation is always really hard for me. <laughs> and also, uh, I know it's quite early in the morning for you. I think it's like 4 p.m. here, uh, 4.30 p.m. here. But actually, it's nice to do it in the middle of the day and get a break from what you're thinking, what you're working on. Actually, I found that quite beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. And uh, the... the uh, the saying that meditation is hard, I, I hear that yeah, I hear that one a lot. And because people think they're not doing it right, but really you can't do meditation wrong as long as you sit on the cushion, close your eyes and breathe. That's what that's what meditation is. And uh, so sometimes sitting down on the cushion or, or doing the standing practice, just just opening up that space for you to, to give yourself. It's a gift. 
I see my I see the practice as a gift. And uh, yeah, I really I really enjoy gifting myself meditation practices. And how did you get here though? Um I I meditate every day. Um not usually in the afternoon, like Jamie said, but I noticed like areas where I was holding tension and it just felt good to acknowledge those spots and then use the practice to release it, like the tension that's built up during the day. So yeah, it was, yeah. It was great. Beautiful. Yeah, another another everyday meditator. I'm a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I don't do my meditation, I don't feel right. Same. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. So, yeah, and every, and everyone, you know, whoever's watching uh, on YouTube as well, it's like there's just take note of your experience. Like I said before, there's no right or wrong. It's all about just, you know, having having the building awareness. The awareness muscle is the biggest muscle that we need to develop in our in our society these days. I think. Um, so, calligraphy qigong. This practice is one that I came to just about just over two years ago and but I had been practicing the standing meditation for about uh, four years already and so when I came to it I picked it up really quickly because I already had a solid base of mindfulness practice and, and awareness and so qigong itself is part of the traditional Chinese medicine kind of system of health and it's very focused on the organs because the organs are like our engine in life um, and so in in saying that they in qigong masters and traditional chinese medicine they say that we need to service our organs every day and until you're 40 and then when you're 40 or older you learn how to do it twice a day because that when we're, when we're older we need we need to take more care we don't even know what servicing our organs means in the West most of the time. But what it actually means is learning to move from the center of our body. And so I can move my arm like this. I can move one limb at a time, or I can move like, I don't know if you can, if, you've, if you can imagine uh, watching a cat or, you know, a different animal moving, they move all together or even a baby. You know, you watch a young baby and they're moving their legs and their arms all at the same time. They can't, they can't yet control because they're, really they're only moving their center and everything else is just following. So I can move my arm or I can move from my center and there's this connection, there's this floating feeling because I'm not actually just moving the muscles in my arm, I'm, I'm moving the fascia starting from the center of my body. So it all moves together when we learn how to move it all together. And so I've come from lifting a lot of weights. And so I know how good that feels. But when I learned how to move my body together in this way, I started unlocking new levels of health and energy and also the, the internal energetic system. But to start with, so I want everyone to, to stand back up and I'm going to do a little exercise to do with the so this area of the body. It's roughly three finger lengths below your belly button. And so I want you to put your hands here. So three finger lengths below your belly button. Put your hands. This area of your body in Qigong is called your lower Dantian. We have three, three Dantians. The mind, the heart, and the gut. So, the, so when I when I talk about the Dantian or the lower Dantian, I'm talking about the lower Dantian because this is this is our engine, this is our motor, and this is probably the area of our bodies that we're most disconnected with. And when we unlock how to use the lower Dantian, energy shoots up into our middle Dantian, and obviously our upper Dantians are very activated and stimulated in today's world. So about bringing the energy back down into our feeling body. And so now when I tell most people to turn to the right, what do they do? 
They turn the head. What's to the right? How do we do this in a connected way from the center of your body? Start moving from your lower dantian. So where your hands are, just gently start turning to the right from the center of your body and then allow the rest of your body to follow. And when you get to the end, when you start feeling some resistance, just pause and just take a breath. And as you inhale, expand your body. And as you exhale, see if there's any more space that you can move into. And inhale again, expand your body. And just let go and allow your body to come back to the front. And now to the left, from the center, turning to the left, staying connected. So it's not about moving far, it's about staying connected, connected to the center of your body, taking a breath, inhale, expanding your body, exhale, see if there's a little more space that you can move into, that left side, inhale, expand your body, and exhale, release that holding and come back to center. So the Dantian is like a ball. It's like a ball in the center of our body. We just moved it from right to left, right to left. Now we're gonna see how we can move it forwards and backwards. So with your hands on your Dantian again, start rolling your Dantian forwards and just allow the rest of your body to follow. And now backwards. So staying with the breath and noticing how the rest of your body and forwards again, how the rest of your body follows. Your legs change the way they balance as you move and backwards again. And back to neutral. Last one is from the middle done. The, the Dantian up to the shoulders. So I can lift my shoulders like this or from the center of my body, I can move up gently, making a smiley face with my Dantian. So we're connecting from the, the lower Dantian to each of the shoulders. And it can be very subtle. We're trying our best not to use muscles. We're trying to use the core of the fascia. We'll just play with that right and left. And okay, now I invite you to explore for yourself. I invite you to close your eyes and go through those movements. So play with turning to the right and then rolling forwards and then turning and just play with all the different movements that are possible from the center of your body and just watch, observe how Observe how the rest of your body just follows. And after you have a strong sense of where your, dan your lower dantian is and where, where you're following, just let go of your hands and keep going. And just watch how your arms are still, they're still following, they're still moving because you're moving from the center of your body. So if you can move, you can move your whole body just by focusing on the center of your body. This is the start of the practice of Qigong. And now just returning to center. 
and I'm gonna go straight into a couple of the Qigong moves. So calligraphy Qigong is a combination between Qigong, Tai Chi and yoga. And the, the calligraphy comes in as, as, a, as the inspiration for the flow and also the spirals. But actually, before I continue, does anyone have any questions or comments about that, that exercise? Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a new way of moving. So there's, you know, it, it, it can take time to really get used to it. So Adam, I've lost your visual. Has anybody else lost him? No, I can still see. Okay, well, I don't know. All right, come on. Okay. I'm not sure why you can't see me, Barbara. I hope that everyone else still can. So if there are no questions or comments. I all right, let's continue with the Qigong. Okay. So the first move in calligraphy Qigong is called the reset. The reset is done before and after every other move. And it does what the name suggests. It resets the body, resets the mind, and gives us a little break from all the other moves. So we're gonna jump right into it. Um, so standing with your, with your feet in a comfortable position. So we keep our mind and our awareness on our lower Dantian as much as possible through this practice. And so when we come down, we roll the Dantian forwards and then we roll the Dantian backwards as we pick up a big bag of feathers. Inhale, lifting up, follow along, up to your heart. Exhale out from your heart out through your fingertips. Inhale to lift your arms up. Exhale as you stretch one side, other side, and then together lifting up. And inhale back down. Okay, reset, lifting up. So as we inhale, we're drawing energy up with our hands up through our spine into our heart. Exhale out from the heart, out through your fingertips. Inhale, lifting all the way up. Exhale, a long, slow exhale as you stretch out each side and then arms together onto your toes, lifting all the way up. Inhale back down. So Qigong is the practice of bringing heaven and earth together in this human experience. So when we inhale, we're drawing in from the earth into our body. Exhale out through your fingertips. There's a given exchange. Inhale up. We start reaching for the heavens. Exhale with trying to reach the energy of the heavens, the sky, reaching up. And then we inhale the energy of the heavens back down into our body through the crown of our head, down our spine, back into your lower dantian. Reset. Inhale. Exhale. Opening your heart. Allow your being to smile. Inhale. Up. Reaching up. Exhale. Stretching out each side and together, touching the heavens. Inhale back down. Okay, we'll do a couple more. Inhale, up. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. We'll try and keep the movements. Inhale back down. Nice and even tempo. So Qigong is about not making any Exhale down. 
Now we go 90 degrees. To your right. Now we turn 120 degrees to your right. So keeping your feet pointing forwards, you're twisting the spine gently. If there's any pain or discomfort, then go more gentle, more slowly. And just bring in that peaceful energy. Breathing in tranquility. And as you exhale and sink down, just releasing any tension. And now we're going to turn all the way back behind you, 180 degrees. Your feet, your feet will cross over. Uh, hopefully you can see. So your feet are pointing back behind you. Testing your balance. And now turning back 90 degrees. way you came. So we're trying to find relaxation in as many different positions as possible because so often there's areas and coming back to the front and then 45 degrees to your left. The more positions we can find relaxation in, the less our body has to build tension on a day-to-day -day basis just to keep us together. 90 degrees to your left. Inhale up. Seeing how soft and relaxed you can be through this move. And 120 degrees. And turning all the way back on your left side behind you 180 degrees feet turned as well legs crossed over testing your balance and back 90 degrees And back to the front. And I invite you all to see if you can half your speed right now for these last few eels. Going the speed of a snail. Because the practice of Qigong is also about learning how to move one cell at a time. To move one cell at a time, that is very, very, very slow. Because the slower we go, the slower we breathe, the slower we breathe, the more calm Mind we feel. The more relaxation we can bring into our whole body. Okay, last one. Inhale all the way up. And as we exhale down, softening your whole body, relaxing as you go. At the bottom, we move straight into reset. Inhale to your heart. Exhale from your heart out through your fingertips. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, reaching up. Inhale back down. We're going to do one more of those resets. So bringing in that relaxing energy. 
through your entire body. There's no right or wrong in this practice. Inhale back down. Another, another part of Qigong. Okay, now we're gonna do a move called water waves. So we come to your right side, hands parallel to the ground. As you inhale, lifting up. Exhale, sinking down. It's like we're rising with the tide. Inhale, lifting up. And now we come across to the left, like a wave. And we get to the end, we lift and, and come back. On each side, there's a little ripple, a little ripple, and then we turn. Being aware of your breath and your lower dantian. And on this one, there's a big wave. We inhale, we lift all the way up over our heads and down. We inhale again, up and around again. The Dantian and your hands are moving together as one with your breath. And another big wave is coming. Inhale, lifting all the way up back and over. And this time we come back to the center. Inhale, reset up to your heart. Exhale out your heart. Wide open heart. Inhale up to the sky, reaching the heavens. Inhale that energy down into your body. Okay, last one, last reset. Inhale up, nice and slow. Exhale out your heart. Inhale up. Exhale, inhale, back down. And now your hands come to rest on your lower dantian again. And close your eyes. Breathing deeply into your belly. Taking the moment of stillness after practice feeling, feel whatever's moving through your body, energy, emotions, and physical sensations. The more connected you are to your lower dantian, the more connected you are to true vitality, health, energy, to your emotional body, your true self, your family and friends and the nature around you. Okay, bring your hands together, rubbing them, generating some warmth. And then onto your eyes, through your hair, and over your face. Through your neck, shoulders. down the front of your body, onto your lower back, 
down your legs. Coming back, we finish with three half resets. We inhale up, exhale down. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. On this last one, we bring our hands together down to your heart. And just take a moment in gratitude and set an intention for the rest of your day. Gratitude for your life, all the blessings in it. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone uh, who's watching on YouTube and is here now. Please, I'd love to hear about your experience of this. Uh, if anyone would like to share. How did you go, Jen and Tim? Oh, I thought it was yeah, great. It was, it was really energizing and relaxing, but energizing in the same. Same motion, really. So, and I felt in a way that I was yawning, but it wasn't a tired yawn, it was like some kind of other energy that was being released. Wow, powerful, maybe. <laughs> but I am, I am, I am, um, I am a painter, so I think that I would actually do that practice before I would start for my day. Um, I do meditate, but I don't do as much movement. And I think that that movement would be really beneficial to when I am painting, because it is a warm up as well. So I found it great. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an amazing practice for the morning. That's, that's why I'm here. Most, most sunrises. Yeah. Mm, wonderful. Beautiful. And how'd you go, Barbara? It was really wonderful, Greg. I'm by far the oldest one here, but it was really great stretch for my back. You know, a lot of the stretches for your back kind of hurt. This didn't yeah. hurt. It's a wonderful, gentle stretch. I loved that. That was probably the most yeah. beneficial. I really loved that. Uh, I love it. So, oh. so glad to hear that. Uh, beautiful. How'd you go, Heather? I loved it. I think I'm going to add it to my routine in the morning too. I, I, I do some energy medicine movements, but the, I loved the reset. That was just extremely relaxing. Felt great. Fantastic. Alistair? It was really nice. I definitely need to be better about practicing meditation. And I feel like this was a fun way to do it. And not such a, it was easier to move than just kind of sit. So I loved it. Thank yeah. you. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for, for joining. And Jamie and Mark. Uh, yeah? No? Yeah. yeah. You're <laughs> It was great, actually, in the middle of the day. I think people should do it, people should do it at work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I do do it in companies as well. So, yeah, if, you, uh, if your business needs it, then I can come in and relax your, your whole, all your staff or co-workers. <laughs> I must say the, uh, the wave movement personally the most important and pleasant. Uh, Having said that, I can't stop thinking about the waves behind you. And I really want to jump in the water right now. Yeah, I think that's what I'm about to do. 
<laughs> Thanks. And Joshua. Yeah, it was uh, it was really nice. It was interesting at times when I felt tired, I realized I was like kind of out of rhythm with the breathing where I wasn't using my core. And then immediately when I would try to kind of make sure I was back in rhythm or, or really doing things from the center, uh, it helped. And uh, no, great, great movement, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you all for your feedback. Emily, do you want to do some sign language for us or I can, uh, I can I can answer for you. Oh, it's good. Yeah, great. Yeah, awesome. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for coming, and to anyone on on YouTube. I um, I love this practice. It's it's given me so much. It's it's given me my legs back. Um, literally, you know, I used a wheelchair for seven seven years. Anytime I had to walk further than a hundred meters, and so to be able to walk on this beach without any pain is has been such a gift to my to my life that i'm so happy that i can share this with with you and that you can feel the benefit as well because uh, it really is magic and yeah thanks thank you all for coming and i, I really also appreciate i want to thank the airbnb production team that are on this call right now who aren't you can't see them but they've been so helpful at making this um, this festival of Paralympian and uh, Olympian online experiences happen. It's given so many of us a purpose in a time when you know athletes are not being able to compete. And while I don't compete anymore in wheelchair tennis, I know that many of my friends who I used to travel around the world with, you know, half of the year, are uh, stuck at home. Some are unable to practice. And you know they've just given a, a purpose to so many people, and also an, a, an outlet for us to share our experiences with. So thank you so much to them, and I hope you all have a beautiful day, afternoon, uh, or night. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you all. Thank you, Adam. We watch it, Adam. Can we watch rewatch that the? To, to be able to practice it, is, can, is there a video that we can rewatch? Uh, I don't I don't know if they're going to. Oh, oh yes, Airbnb just um, commented. Yes, there is a the YouTube replay will be live soon. Oh right, okay, okay brilliant. That's good. Yeah, so there we go. Thank you. Any other questions? If there's any questions, feel free. Otherwise. Have a nice day. Brilliant. Thank you. That was Hold great. On. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Jump in. See you, everyone. See you, Calista. See you, Heather.